So in this video, I'm talking about how do you overcome and deal with trading injuries? Now, unfortunately, as safe as weight trading is, there is always the nagging specter that there's a possibility that you could get injured. Sometimes injuries happen from completely chance accidents. And sometimes injuries happen completely outside of the gym, but they affect your ability to work out. And the question is, how do you overcome these injuries? Now I'm going to talk about one particular injury that I sustained when I was in my early thirties and in a place where I thought for certain that my career was over a point that was drummed home by the physicians who took a look at the injury and said that there was no way whatsoever that I'd be able to continue training. And to make a long story short, I shot my DVD a year later, and you can see me here curling the 120 pound dumbbells. And this was exactly a year after my accident. And what I want to share in this video is the mindset that you need to have if you ever get injured, whether it's a, a career ending injury, like the one that I thought I had, or if it's a minor injury or recurring injury. There's a mindset you need to have to get through it. And it's important to understand that these things happen. Yes, but there's a way through it. So stay tuned and we'll talk a little more about this. So in this video, I'm talking about how do you deal with and how do you overcome training injuries? And before I go any further, I can thank everyone for the tremendous support we've been having so far for this channel. And do be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell as well. So you'll be sure to get all the new content as it comes out. I we're putting out a lot of content on a weekly basis. So do stay tuned and thanks again. So I was talking about the cervical vertebrae herniation that I suffered from a freak accident that happened to me in my early thirties, where I was at a cable crossover machine curling 250 pounds, the full stack and a 220 pound man who was doing pull-ups right behind me fell and hit me in the neck as I was at the top of pulling up all that weight, his elbow smashed into my neck. And I remember this overwhelming flash of pain that went all the way from my neck down to my fingers. And I must have been in a state of shock because as much as I was completely surrounded by this blinding pain, I kept on going and got two more reps before I put the weight down. And it was when I put the weight down that I realized that I literally couldn't move my neck and could barely move my arms. The degree of pain was excruciating and almost indescribable. And one of the hardest things was going home afterwards and going to the emergency room because being in a car even the slightest jarring from a bump in the road would send a spasm of pain all through my neck, all the way down my hands. It was really bad. And I had this growing fear, this growing dread that this could be the end, that this could be the time when I no longer could do what I so loved doing. After uh, an MRI, which was extremely painful because for MRIs, you have to lay perfectly still with your head back, which with my neck injury was extremely difficult. So much so that it took two MRI tries before they could finally get a reading enough to see what was going on. So what they found was that 
when I was struck, there was one cervical vertebrae that was pushed to the left and another one was pushed to the right. And because of that, had I not been as heavily muscled as I am and as I was, I could have been paralyzed. However, the continual prognosis and recommendations that I got from my physicians was that these are herniations and they're not going to go away and that I could probably no longer hold any kind of significant weight in my hands and that my weight training was essentially over. Now at that point, I had, uh, a choice and I saw very clearly what my choice was. My choice was, do I give in to this growing sense of despair or do I work as hard as humanly possible to try to get back? And I chose to work as hard as humanly possible to get back. Two weeks later, I was back in the gym and it took me two weeks to get back from the gym because it took two weeks to be able to be in a vehicle or a subway where the pain that I felt from every movement was bearable. Not that it went away, but was bearable. And I started doing legs and I did legs using only machines where I could use a pin because I couldn't load any plates onto anything at that point. I almost couldn't move my neck at all. I looked completely handicapped walking into the gym, but I did what I could. And I took comfort in the fact that at least I could train my legs. It may not have been the 500 pound epic squats that I was used to doing, but it was something. And I was grateful for just being able to do something. And slowly I was able to get to a place where I could start doing some really light upper body movements, really light. And I remember the boy I once was who could barely lift the 45 pound bar. I remember how difficult it was the first time I went into an actual gym and how heavy and overwhelming it was to try to lift that 45 pound bar. And I thought back to what I had become. I thought back to the fact that that boy had grown into someone who could bench press 405 pounds. And if I could do that, and if I could keep my focus on how incremental it was for me to go from not being able to push the bar to being able to get four plates up, six reps. I could do this. All I focused on was gratitude for the fact that I'd been able to do so much in my career so far and gratitude I was still able to keep on going. And slowly, but surely, very slowly, I started getting back. The pain started to subside the more I did. And I found that there were things that I probably could never do again. But there were so many things that I could do. And that's, that's what I did. I kept on doing it. That's what you have to do. What you can do, you have to do. Now, being told that you'll never lift weights again, or you'll never be able to do something again, is very much something that athletes tend to hear from physicians. And it's not that they're ill-meaning or they're trying to dissuade you or they're trying to put you down. It's just that if you think about the world's population, most physicians deal with people who don't work out, people who aren't really driven to take charge of their lives and, you know, find a path and master that path and, you know, really go through, you know, the difficulties and the pain and the incremental progression that is weight training. So when they tell someone 
a diagnosis is based on their experience of all those people who they've worked with before. But very often they've never worked with someone who's driven, someone who's been training their whole life, someone who is in a sense, used to pain, used to going through pain in order to make pro progress. And that's what recovery from any injury tends to be. And so, like I said, it's not that they're ill-meaning, it's just that they may not have a good grasp of what you're capable of because they don't really know you, but you know you, and you know what you can do. And even if you can't make it back, you still have to give it your best and try because you'll never know unless you try. And eventually I was able to get right back to where I was before and even stronger. I think that to be honest, my strongest days came after that injury because, because I paid so much attention to every exercise and so much attention to everything I was doing. It made me better as a trainer, a personal trainer in terms of understanding my clients when they were injured, but also made me better in terms of my own training to the point where I was able to lift far more than I ever did in my twenties, in my later thirties and forties. And. Again, there's some things I can't do. I'll never be able to do a clean and press ever again. Uh, I used to deadlift up to five, sometimes even six plates. I can't do that anymore because of my neck injury. And here's the other important part, which is it never went away. I still experience consistent pain in my neck and have for many, many years. I don't talk about it because I don't like the idea of giving it too much lip service. I don't like the idea of empowering fact or putting too much attention on the idea that I have this lingering pain. And if I do something the wrong way, I could be in excruciating pain for an entire week afterwards. And I'll kind of see it coming and be like, ah. Oh, it's going to hurt, but it's the price that I pay to be able to do all the wonderful things that I'm able to do. But the gratitude that I have is so overwhelming that it mostly drowns most of the pain out. The gratitude that I can still lift, the gratitude that I can still be able to do what I love doing. And Derek Walcott wrote. Break a vase and the love that reassembles the fragments is stronger than the love which took its symmetry for granted when it was whole. And that's exactly how I felt. When I suffered that injury, it made me really assess how much for granted sometimes I would take this wonderful thing I was able to do for so much of my life. And in finding my way slowly, agonizingly, incrementally back to people to doing it, it was just like a broken vase that you reassemble. The care of reassembling it creates and should create an even greater gratitude, an even greater appreciation of what you're doing. And I think that it's the way back for most of us. The way back is to be grateful for the fact that you can do anything and to have this unshakable sense of resolve that you're going to do what you can do. If something hurts, you stop. And that was always my mantra. If it hurts, I stop. Try and find what doesn't hurt and do that. And if you are injured and you're struggling to get back, understand as well, even though sometimes and some days it may feel like. You're not getting anywhere. You are, as long as you put one foot in front of the other and do what you can, best you can, you're going to keep on going and know that I'm always going to be here cheering you on. Thanks for tuning in and Excelsior.